Hi everyone, I'm Nitika, the founder of Wonderlab and uh, welcome to the Sunday Wellness Session by Policy Bazaar. So today what we're going to do is uh, we are going to look, uh, you know, conduct fun science experiments uh, for you to try at home. So let me see who all are joining and then let's see how we can, you know, start doing these experiments. All right. So today we will be doing three experiments. Uh, the first experiment I like to call as ice play. Okay. So we will be freezing our toys in ice and uh, using a very, very simple, uh, you know, thing which is available in all our kitchens to melt it. Uh, we will also uh, melt, uh, you know, ice. Apart from that, we will make a fizzy rainbow. Uh, everyone loves rainbow. So we will make them fizz using, again, simple materials available at home. And finally, we will also make a lava lamp. So I hope you all are excited. Yes. I'm waiting for you guys to join. So let me know when I can start on chat, guys. Okay. So let's try doing the first experiment. Our first experiment is called ice play. Okay. For that experiment, we need any simple container, you know, those used uh, containers that we have at home from our takeaway. So I have one of those. You need water. Okay, you need uh, some old decorative stones that you may have. So I've got some uh, stones, if you can see, and I've got some toys. And uh, I like to use some color for this. All right. Uh, so in colors, uh, I would love you to try anything that you have at home, uh, paint or anything. So I'll show you. Okay, so let's start. So now in this container, I'm going to take some water. Let me know if you can see it. Let me just add some water for you. There you go. Okay. And in that, I'm going to drop my toys like this. So I'm adding some seashells and some stones to make it interesting. And let me add some interesting color to it. So I use food color for all my activities, but you can use any color that you have at home, like your normal poster paints will work equally well. And just add the color and mix it up. So here, I'm going to mix it all up. So now I'm going to try to create a beautiful under the ocean kind of scene over here. So I need some more water. Let's add some. Okay. I'm adding some plants. And I'm going to add some toys. So look, I've got um, some seashells. But you can do it with anything. You don't need, uh, you know, you don't need only an underwater scene. You can just make a scene like, say, a jungle. You can put trees. You can put animals. You can make a dino world by putting a dinosaur. So look, I've got a container with some water and some toys. Can you all see it? Let me know if you can see it in chat. OK. So now what we have to do is we have to freeze this overnight. OK. And once we do that, then we will do a lot of fun things with it. So I'll show that to you now. So let me get you some uh, frozen ice now. So I have done this for you and I've kept two pieces for you. I'm going to get it from my fridge very quickly. Okay, so look, can you guys see this? I just had this old plastic container and another one of the same one. I've frozen two blocks of ice. I'll show you now. So I'm going to now put this aside. I'm going to put this one in the fridge for my son. And I'm going to take this and turn this around. Okay, so this is like frozen really, really uh, well, so we are going to give it like 30 seconds, okay, 
for it to melt it just a little bit. Okay. And then we're going to melt it. So and can anyone guess how can we melt a block of ice with something which is very easily available at home? Say, uh, what do you think? Any guesses, guys? You can write in the chat. Something that can melt ice, which is easily available in the kitchen, which we use in our food daily. Any guesses? Mm, let's see. I'm looking for answers in the chat. Okay, so this is almost coming out. Let's see. There. Doesn't this look beautiful? But this is a frozen solid block of ice. So you know what we are going to do? The challenge that you have to give to your child is to take all the toys out of this frozen block of ice. Okay. Now, how can we do this now? Uh, so no one seems to be guessing. So I'll give you an idea. Now, can you guess what this is? Okay. So this is salt. Okay. We use this every day. And you know what salt can do if you add it on ice? I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to add lots of salt. Now you can see, I'll show it very closely to you. Like, look, this piece of ice is like a frozen solid block of ice. Can you see? So now I'm going to add the salt on top. On this really, really frozen piece of ice. Okay. And by the way, guys, there are a couple of rules that one should follow while conducting science experiments. One is that your workstation should be clean. Okay. So every time we will do an experiment, we will do the experiment and then clean the workstation before we move on to the next one. Second is that you need to always have hand towels in place and you need to keep uh, it away from all the electronic gadgets because you don't want water to be falling on your laptops or on your remote. So that's the other thing. Okay. Okay. So I'm adding eyes and I can see my eyes melting. Now, can you guys see? Let me show it to you. So, if you can see, the ice has begun to melt from the top. You know what I'm going to do next? And I'm going to add some salt water on it. So, let me try doing that. Now, why am I adding salt on this? Can anyone guess? So, what does salt do to uh, ice? Salt lowers the melting point of ice, okay? So, for example, uh, in cold countries, you know, when you get ice on the road and it's completely frozen, they add salt on the road so that they can melt the ice quickly because what it does is it lowers the, it lowers the freezing point. So, what happens is ice just melts faster. Okay. All right. Just give me a second. I'm mixing it. I'm mixing it right now and showing it. All right. So I'm going to mix it. And I'm going to melt. So this takes a bit of time and it will engage your child quite well. But I'll show this to you. All my stones which were at the bottom of my, uh, you know, eyes are beginning to come out. Can you see? Let me turn the screen down to show you a little bit. Can you see now? Okay. So, all these stones are actually beginning to come out from the block because salt has made holes in the stone. Can you see from the side? I'm going to try to show it to you. Okay, I have an idea. Let me switch on the flashlight of my phone and show it to you. Okay. to you can you see the rivets on the side of my eyes oops like i said keep water away from uh electronic devices okay so now all these toys will slowly start coming out because what we have done is we've made ice in this block melt very fast and slowly you can use forks you can also use you know um tools that you have at home like uh, gardening tools and give that to your child and get them to take out the toys from the size
I hope you enjoyed this experiment. It is one of my favorite experiments and it gives a lot, major sense of accomplishment to your child when he is able to take something out. Okay. Now, in order to help myself um, to get another toilet, I'm going to just add some salt water because it just makes the process much, 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 much faster. Can you see, guys, how all the toys are beginning to come out? And this was really frozen, you know, just about a few seconds ago. So now they're all just stuck in the stone. But, ah, look, I've got my first two now. And similarly, I'm going to do this for all the other activities. Look, I've now got a seashell out. So it's a lot of fun, this activity. And children will be engaged for hours, you know, playing this. And they don't get enough of it. So it's a wonderful activity to try at home with very simple materials. All you need is water, some old toys, anything. In fact, it doesn't even have to be a toy. You can freeze just about anything in water. And then freeze it. Adding color adds fun to it. But if you don't want to add color, you don't have to. And there is another thing you can do, actually, which I will show you now. So what you can also do is you can um, let me just clean my hands a little bit because they're wet. Uh, you can also add color to this, okay? So I've got these food colors. So what will happen is when you add color to this, the color goes into the holes that we've made on the side. And you will see these rivets. And children will understand how the salt has managed to make. I'm using a dark color. And I'll turn it around just for you in a second for you to understand what I'm saying. Look. Can you see these lines of color going down? This is because the salt that I added on this piece of block actually made holes in this ice. And so now the color is able to go down from here. And this is the experiment, guys. This is the first experiment which we like to call ice play. And slowly, these all these toys are beginning to come out. So... And you can make a nice treasure box for your children. This can be an ongoing activity that you do in summers. Uh, Mother's Day also recently went by and, you know, a fantastic mom and child activity to try at home. Okay. So now our first experiment called ice play is over. I'm going to put this on the side and I'm going to clean up my workstation like I mentioned. Right. So uh, give me a second till I come back with the next activity. You always need a lot of hand towels. One second. Yes, you always need a lot of hand towels when you're conducting experiments because it's a messy thing. Science experiments can be messy and it's fantastic for children to get messy. It's all right. And it's summertime. So, I mean, let your child get messy. It is good for them. Sensory activities are fantastic. Uh, sensory vibe because ice was also very cold and, you know, they get an amazing sensory experience. Great. So this was the first activity that we had to do. Now we will move to something which I like to call fizzy rainbow. Okay. Now I'll show you all the materials first that we need for fizzy rainbow. But before I get on to the next one, does anyone have any questions? You guys can write in the chat box. Okay. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Any questions, please? All right, I guess you guys, I'm explaining it well and you are understanding everything very well. So you're able to get everything very quickly. Great. So now for the next experiment, which we call fizzy rainbow, all we need is one is we need three cups. Okay. And we can actually add some more colors. Let me add some more cups for you. Okay. All right. Let's make a rainbow. So, in these cups, we are going to make rainbow colors and we are going to make it fizz, all right? So, one is you need cups. Second is you need water, like in all experiments. Third, you need primary colors. Now, what are the three primary colors? We have blue, we have yellow, and we have red. Why are these colors called primary colors? Because you can't break these to make in them into any new colors, which means that, uh, for example, a green is made by mixing yellow and blue. So a green can be broken down into yellow and blue, but blue cannot be broken down into anything or red or for that matter, yellow. So these are called primary colors. 
we mix primary colors to make secondary colors okay so what we are going to do is first make all the rainbow colors using primary colors okay in these cups uh, then in order to make the rainbow fizz we need two important ingredients we need baking soda which is available in all our homes when we bake cakes it is also called meetha soda which is easily available uh, and the second thing that we need is vinegar i have added my vinegar in this beaker okay but you can use any vinegar that you have at home all right so that's all that we need and uh, i like to use soap to add an element to my rainbow so this is just water and some liquid vim in it liquid dish soap so i just need all of these materials to do this experiment so should we start can i see a thumbs up in the chat yeah okay okay so now i'm adding water so we'll start doing the experiment now so i'm going to add water to my cups okay so we need a little bit of water so if you guys also want to do this along with me you can quickly go and get the materials you can type in the chat and tell me that you know you want me to wait and i'll wait so i'm just adding a little bit of this water okay in all my cups i just need a little bit more right. okay this is one of my favorite experiments okay one more rule whenever we are working uh, we should always close our sources of liquids which means close the bottle before you start doing the next step okay okay now i'm going to make first our primary colors so i'm going to add red a drop of red and mix it up mm, let me make it a little darker for fun so red water no uh -uh. careful then yellow we we'll mix that and some blue can you see it okay and some blue okay so i'm going to mix it all up now i have three primary colors now what are the colors of a rainbow guys it's called vibgyor which is violet indigo blue green yellow orange and red okay so i'm not making violet other than that i'll make all the other colors so now i need to make indigo now how do i make it's like a type of purple color right so i need to mix which two primary colors tell me any guesses how about blue and red let's try okay so let me mix two one two three drops of blue and two drops of red okay let's mix it what do you think guys does it look like indigo can i add a little bit more red mm, i think one drop of red would be nice okay this is nice and you'll be able to see the color a lot better okay so this is indigo now let's make green okay Okay, so what do we need? We need a drop of yellow. Two, and we need a drop of blue. So you can use any poster paints at home to do this. It's not necessary to be using food colors. It's just that we use food colors regularly. So, so look, we've got green. Okay, and which is the last color that is left, guys? Any guesses? of a rainbow to complete a rainbow yes that's right that's orange so in order to make orange i'll add more yellow like four drops of yellow and only one drop of red because our red is pretty dark okay and you can adjust the colors based on the colors you have at home but look i've got a very beautiful orange now okay so now let me set these up like a rainbow so violet 
indigo blue let me just make a circle green yellow orange and red can you all see my rainbow guys is it visible i think i should turn my screen down just a little bit so you can see clearly yeah okay okay so now what do we need we need baking soda to do the next step okay where is our baking soda we are going to add baking soda to this and then we are going to add citric acid there it is so here is my baking soda okay so i'm taking a spoon i'm adding one spoon and say two spoons of baking soda in each one of them Are you guys having fun up till now? Does it look like something you'd like to try at home with your children as well? Do write your comments in the chat box. Okay, so I'm adding this. There you go. Okay. So now our prep for our fizzy rainbow is complete. What do we have? We have all the rainbow colors made, right? In each color, we have added some baking soda. You can use simple kitchen cups to do this, okay? Very simple to try at home with poster paints, acrylic paints, any paints that you might have, all right? Okay, okay. Now, the next step is to add vinegar. So I have vinegar in a beaker over here. And if anyone also has citric acid, you can mix citric acid in water to make a citric acid solution and do the same thing using that as well. Okay, so I'm going to add just a little bit and I'm going to try to show you what happens. I'm going to show. Can you see? It's fizzing. This is really a lot of fun, guys. So I'm going to add a little and we're going to, oops, it's come out. Look, I've got my fizzy rainbow. Did you enjoy this? I personally love this experiment and I love the fizz that came out. But now I want to make it fizz in a way that it comes out of the cup like a volcano. So I'm going to try something else. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my baking soda again in my container. Okay. It's fizzing. Just a little bit baking soda quickly. Okay. It's fizzing. Okay. Now I've added quite a lot of baking soda. And now I'm going to add some soap to this. Okay, so that's a new step, which I did not do last time. What am I doing? I'm adding soap. Now, what soap is this? This is basically, let me just show you. I've used our household dish wash, which is called Vim. Okay, and I have added it in some water to dilute it a little bit. And now I'm going to add a little bit of it to my solutions. There you go. And now the fun part. Okay, so let me just make some space. Let's make a circle and get ready for our fizz that's about to come. Okay, so I'm going to take my solution here, which is vinegar. And I'm going to add just a little bit. Wow, look at that. Isn't that fun? Check it out. Wow. This tray looks so colorful and so beautiful. It is so much fun. And you know what? If I touch this fizz, it's actually a little cold. This reaction actually absorbs heat. It's an endothermic reaction. You know, so what just happened here 
we used baking soda and we used vinegar right and when we put them together they reacted what did they react to do okay now i'm going to talk about this experiment just a little bit so what happened here so when baking soda and vinegar come together they react to make a gas can anyone guess the gas that is it's the gas that we breathe out it's called carbon dioxide okay so when we did this experiment for the first time uh baking soda and vinegar reacted to make gas bubbles when we did it the second time we also added soap to it okay so what happened when we added soap How, why did it come out can anyone guess any questions there any guesses okay i'll tell you so basically the gas got trapped in the soap and it made a foam and there was so much gas that was produced that the foam came out just like a volcano so you can make your colorful volcanoes at home using baking soda and vinegar at any point in time at home okay so this experiment was a lot of fun and we call it fizzy rainbow i hope you all had a good time doing it now i'm going to clean up just a little bit because i've got foam on my table and i'm going to set up my next experiment which is called lava lamp it is also very exciting and it uses more or less similar ingredients called with like baking soda vinegar and oil the new ingredient that we need in the next activity is oil we'll also need a glass i will show you all the materials but first let me clean up so give me 30 seconds and i will just put this away all right in the meantime you can think of any questions that you might have and we'll take it from there okay so that was fast and now we will do the next experiment for lava lamp so i'm going to set it up again for you and give me a second i'm going to show you all the ingredients later okay so what we need for this is again baking soda okay so you can see baking soda apart from baking soda you need a any thin glass to make this lava lamp you can use a glass like this or you can use a thin container like this test tube i'll be using this test tube and the reason why we need a thin container is because we need uh less oil and we'll also get height okay so any thin container that you might have a, at home like a flower vase or anything will work very well okay uh you need oil so i've got vegetable oil any oil will work you can use mineral oil or baby oil or vegetable oil or any cooking oil the only thing that you need to keep in mind is let the color of the oil be slightly light so you can see the reaction okay so we need these and the last thing but not the least is again you need some vinegar i have a little bit of left so i will use this for our experiment and i'm just removing some old materials that i had okay and you need something to mix and you need some color and because lava looks orange so i'm going to make orange lava for you okay so that's all you need you can see my table now you need oil you need some vinegar you need a container thin container like this uh and i'm going to use a glass as a stand for my test tube because i don't have a test tube stand at home something to mix some food color okay you can again use poster paints as i had mentioned earlier so should we dive into this experiment are we all ready for making a lava lamp so this experiment is a quick one and you can all do it at home very easily oh yes and i forgot my most important ingredient which is baking soda so the first step of this experiment is you need some baking soda at the bottom of your thin container okay so i've added one spoon right now I want to add a little bit more. Okay, two. And okay, three. Okay, so I've got three, three spoons of baking soda. After this, I'm going to add some oil to this. Okay, we pour it gently. 
I'm trying not to drop any oil. Okay, I'll leave some space. I think this much is enough. Just a little bit more. Okay, let me just put some more. Okay. So I've got baking soda and then oil on top. I'm going to put this here. Now the next step is to prepare our solution. So I'm going to use vinegar, but I'll also show you how to do this using citric acid. Okay. So I'll need another container. So I'm just taking this for now. Okay. And I'm going to add some water to it. About um, 50 ml water. Yeah. And I have some citric acid at home too. You know, we use citric acid at home uh, to make things like dokla. What does citric acid do? Citric acid also reacts with baking soda to make the gas that we breathe out, which is carbon dioxide gas. So let's see what happens when we try it here. Okay. So now I'm just mixing it up. Just be patient with me as I mix it up. Okay. So now imagine if I add this to my solution here and it starts a reaction. You won't be able to see anything. So in order to make it a little more exciting, I'm going to add some red color to it. Okay, so I have red food color here. Let me just add some. Let me make it dark so you can see it. Okay. I want to add some more red color to make it a little more exciting. Yeah. You can add red paint, poster paint, like I mentioned before. Any color will work. A little bit of yellow to make it orange, to make it look like lava. What do you think, guys? Does it look like lava? Yet. Okay. And one additional thing that I like to do in this one also is switch on the flashlight of my phone like this and put it at the bottom so you can see the reaction well. Okay. So let's first do the reaction. Okay. So here I've got baking soda at the base. I've added oil, which is vegetable oil from my kitchen on top. And now I'm adding citric acid. You can also add vinegar. I have vinegar. I'll show it to you in both the cases. And look what's happening. Can you see a different something happening in here? Oh, look, it's coming up. Yes, that's lava. Can you see blobs of water going up and down inside my test tube? You can easily try this fun experiment at home also. And as time is progressing, the reaction is speeding up and it's going up and down and up and down and up and down. See? So what do you think is happening here? Why are the blobs coming up and then why are they going down? Okay. So let's, in this experiment, there are two concepts at play. One is the chemical reaction that we've already discussed. And another one is a play on density. Okay, so I will explain both of them. But can you see? Isn't this beautiful? You can also make this at home yourself. Okay, I'm going to put this aside here and I'm going to talk about the experiment just a little bit now. Okay, so what happens is when, so, okay, what we have at the base is baking soda. It is a solid, it is the most dense material of all, right? And so when we put this here, it comes at the bottom. Then we added oil. Now what happens when we add oil and when we mix water and oil? Oil floats, right? Because oil is less dense than water. But in this case, what we did was we added oil first. Then we added a solution which had water in it 
right? We made a citric acid solution or I can also add vinegar. It will give you the same reaction, okay? When it went down, it reacted with the baking soda and it created bubbles of carbon dioxide. Now, we all know that gas is the least dense material that we have. It is one of the least, it, it has very less weight. So, it picked up those water bubbles, right, and brought them to the top. Now, what happened when they came to the top? The gas was released, right? And then the bubbles came back in. And so they went up and down and up and down. And that is what's happening over here. They are going up and down and up and down. So you may ask what will happen after some time. Uh, the reaction will stop when all the citric acid has, you know, reacted with the baking soda at the bottom. Now, I can give it a mix like this to make the reaction going again. Oops, I just did that. Oh, and the reaction has again sped up. You can also add a little bit of more citric acid solution or a little bit of more vinegar. Should we try adding vinegar with a different color now, guys, to see what happens? Let me add blue to my vinegar. So I'm just showing it to you. I'm adding blue here for blue vinegar. And I'm adding it to my solution and let's see what happens. It is going in. And do you see any blue blobs coming up yet? Uh, my container is about to overflow. Let's see. I hope it comes up soon. And yes, my first blue blob is coming up. Just watch carefully. I don't know if you can see. The blue colored vinegar has also started reacting and the drops are going up and down. You know, you can try this. You can try to make a rainbow lava lamp as well. So now I've got blobs of blue and orange in my lava lamp. How exciting is that? Now, what could you do once this experiment is over? So what will happen is that you'll have a layer of baking soda followed by some water because after the reaction you just get gas and water and the oil will be on top you can drain that oil and reuse in the same container for the experiment again the oil won't be spoiled so that's a fantastic way to reuse the materials we have used to make do more experiments there and so our lava lamp is ready and now we have conducted all the three experiments uh, i now want to open up for any questions that you all may have and I'll, I'd, I'd be happy to answer those and I hope you all had fun trying these at home with your children. So any questions guys let me see if there are questions. Okay I'm waiting I'll give you all one minute see if there are any more questions. Okay. So I'll wait and you know, while we're waiting, I can tell you some more things you can do with uh, simple things like baking soda and vinegar at home. So one of the favorite activities that I used to do with my son is called hatching dinosaur eggs. Okay, so all the children love making eggs and you know, uh, it's a very simple activity. All you need is some baking soda and some water and a toy. Okay, so let me just maybe since we have some extra time show you how to do that as well. So. All you need is some water and baking soda and maybe some color. So let me clean up my station and show you this one bonus experiment that I've just come up with. Okay, so let me make this starfish my dinosaur. Okay, now I'll take uh, some baking soda in here. And I'm going to add some water to it. Okay, let me see. I need clean a clean container to a spoon. Just adding a little bit of water to it. And I'll try to make a dough out of it. Like this. Can you see? Like So this is like a bit of a doughy thing that you can see.
this will also require a fridge to freeze it but i'll just show you so what i'm doing is i am basically making a sort of paste of baking soda with my hands again you can get your child to do this along with you okay so there i've made some i'm going to put this inside can you see and i'm going to cover it up like this so with a little bit of more baking soda I'm going to make a sort of an egg. Now what I would do is I'd freeze this, okay, in my fridge. Now I can't do that right now with you, but I can freeze this in my fridge. And then with the then once it's frozen, you can take a dropper, okay, of sorts with your children and add like drops of water and hatch. Can you see it's fizzing? hatch the small toy out of your baking soda eggs isn't this fun this is a fun experiment that you can also try at home guys see there you go and look my starfish is almost out so when you freeze this in a fridge it is still a lot more fun like a lot more fun. So try this at home with your children. Send us messages and give us feedback on what you thought of these experiments. I hope you all had a good time. I'm going to clean up my hands. And I'll wait for your questions. If anyone else has any questions, please let me know. So my starfish is out. Isn't that fun? I had a wonderful time doing experiments with all of you. I hope you all also had a fantastic time doing these experiments and you'll be able to try some of these at home. Uh, and uh, I'd now like to take your leave. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. I'll wait for a minute for those. So should we end the session, guys? Please let me know. I'm waiting. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Bye. I had fun doing these experiments with you. <laughs>